Okay, so our project, we've got the side panel that opens up and a little close. We've got this, these other screens that will fill in their content later, um, home screen and such. What we've also got in the art screen is, in our example, we also are going to open an external link uh, over to the college's real website. So we'll create another button here to go to the live website. And the point of this is to see that, well, we've been de basically dealing with the SPA nature of this thing. We've been dealing with the single page app nature, meaning that all of our screens, all of our pop-ups, everything exists in this one HTML file. We can, of course, link to other HTML files, such as what we're about to do to the college's homepage. Uh, and we need to have a couple special considerations when that happens. So we'll get back to our code and we'll go back to find where we've got that grid, where we've got the calendar button. Where did that end up? That's over at, in my case, line 144. We'll say, uh, we'll call this catalog. A tag. It's going to be a link again href um, pound I don't know what just yet so I'll just put this this is often a, a pound but sound a pound sign by itself is a dummy link it doesn't go anywhere but it behaves like a link sometimes if we set this up and put nothing in the href it doesn't quite behave like a link or a button so putting a dummy link is often helpful it doesn't go anywhere but it's useful data roll button so that it looks like a button, an icon, um, I'll try um, bullets, like a bullet point icon, Where I want it to go is to the college's home page, http colon slash slash sdce. So I took out the pound sign. Make sure you take out the pound sign. And I have a website, and I have the full address. I need the protocol. The www part is optional, but I need the, proto the protocol, which is the http portion. If you're trying to connect to a secure website, then that should be https. This is not secure, uh, so it's going to point over to the college's website. Now, um, since we're still working with the web version of our project, we should th keep that in mind in terms of usability. I want to see what this looks like. So if I go over to the art screen, and click the catalog. It goes to the home page of the college. Good. The problem is that it took over. If I go browse other things on the website, I have to press back and back and back to get back to this mobile project. We have other considerations when it's an actual app next month. But for the moment, this is opening, and I would like it instead to open in its own window or tab. If you recall when we were first touching on HTML, when we make a link, especially an external link, we should have a target, which is a quick way to create a new window or tab. It depends on the web browser. The, the attribute of target, the, the value of underscore blank. This should then open that website in its own window, its own tab. It used to be that external links with target blank would open in a brand new window. But we got annoyed as a society, I suppose, you know, as, a, as a species, we got annoyed of these pop-ups that would appear on, on websites. So pretty much every web browser now doesn't really make a new pop-up window, it makes a new tab. So to force a pop-up window is other ways. This will be fine for the moment. We are opening up a blank tab to display that, uh, that, that site. And before we check the results, we need to do one more thing because um, depending on the web browser, it may, it may work just fine. 
but instead of guessing what might happen, again, we should be specific of what should happen. We'll add another attribute. This one is rel. Yes, we have data role. We have data rel. Those are two jQuery mobile things. Data rel, data role. Rel is a plain old HTML 1.0 uh, attribute. And here we'll have a rel of external. This is, again, to ensure whatever web browser the person is using understands this should open in, an, in, a, in another window. The relationship of this link to our current project is that it's external. And it seemed to have worked a moment ago, but again, I've been doing this class for a few years and testing it, testing this code on devices and different browsers all the time, and this has been often to work the best. So if you click on the button catalog, should open in a new tab, the college's website. So if I close the college's website, it then um, opens in a new window, in a new external window. Now I'm saying I'm about to click a button called Catalog and it goes to the college's website. See if you can find the link to show you the real college's website, I'm sorry, the real college's catalog, and replace that link. That link's not quite right. Go find the link on the college's website that is the college, that is the catalog screen. Copy and paste that in. There's a screen in, on the college's website that will show you the most up-to-date current catalog. That's what I want to display when I click the link. So you should find you should have found that the link is over over here under take a class. That's that's the link we really want. Slash class dash schedule that gives you the latest catalog, which is searchable. That's what I want to open up from my project. Okay, so again, um, content-wise, we'll add that a little later. The home page is looking really sparse. This should have something more meaningful, like um, some text and maybe a graphic and such. But we'll get into the detail of content a little later uh, in more detail. At, at the very least, I want to put a, a graphic and, and some text there. So it'd be a good idea to borrow some graphics from the, from the college's official website. So we'll actually do this. Let's go to the college's website. So in your browser, go to sdce.edu. And I like that there are these graphics. If you go to Program, Student Services, Certificate, Organization, I like these wide graphics at the top here. I want to borrow these graphics for our project. And I like these also because since they're wide, we can resize them and, and show them in different ways. So go to your web browser and go to the section of programs and that graphic up there, right click, save image as. We're just going to take one graphic for the moment, we'll come back for some other ones later. But uh, save image as. If you're in a different browser it may say that as something else, but save that picture of the students there. Right click, save image, and I'm going to save it into my project folder. To find where your project is at inside the mobile website. And I've got a folder of images. I should keep my images organized in an images folder. So I will open the images folder. 
It's got a file name there of org underscore image. You can rename that if you want. Just saving that graphic from the college's website into my project folder. I want to use that as all as like an intro graphic of my um, home page. So I'm saving that to my project. If I go back to my code. Back on line 43, we left the very generic welcome message of heading. It's not welcoming at all, so we will change it to then say, you know, welcome. So line 43, welcome. Line 45, we're going to display the, um, the image here so image tag image tag is one of the ones that does not have a pair it's just a single opening tag like that but it has attributes it has an attribute of source src we've got a picture which is in my case i left the name the same if you got a different picture if you renamed your picture you know what the name is but the picture that i got off of the website is org image and it's actually in a folder of images, isn't it? Question. Is there, um, is there a specific like, reason or characteristic about the images? Why does it have a pen tag? And is that related to other types that don't have a tag? Well, when the HTML specification was being developed, originally it started off with one person, but as he got more input from other people, you know, um, the language evolved. So for whatever reason, when this was being invented, they felt image tag without a closing is what we want. So we just live with it. The image tag is one of them. There's the HR tag, which creates the horizontal rule, that line. That's a single closing one. There's the meta tags, which we have at the top here. These don't have a pair. So there's uh, no actual, I don't think there's quite a reason for why some of them don't have a pair, but when they invented it, they might have had a reason, and now we just memorize it and live with it. If you've got an image tag there, make sure you type the name of your image properly, and I put it inside of my folder. Remember, we've got a folder there called images, plural, so I have to write images slash and then the name of the graphic. That's the full path to the graphic. Save it and run it. You should then see the picture. It's not exactly how we thought it might be, perhaps, but we should see a picture. Now, if I've got my window spread out completely like that, okay, I see the picture. But if I were to look at it on a mobile device, perhaps that is tall and thin, I might see that amount. But that's not exactly what I want because do you notice there is the the padding that might be padding or that might be margin on the left side. There's a little bit of breathing room to the left of that those elements. But on the right side there isn't. The picture just goes off the edge of the, the screen. That's not what I want. If I wanted it if the user screen was this big, I I want it to look like I put the picture there on purpose with some padding on the right. Or maybe I want to resize the graphic to fit properly on the screen. So here's where CSS comes in. We put in a graphic, we put in a graphic, but we didn't really style it. It's just there as is. And here, already to say from the beginning, this is really where the class and the ID is really going to work. I'm not going to try to write some CSS selector for image because it's inside of article. That's going to be way too generic. We will write a, a class because we might reuse the graphic or a similar graphic. So we'll write class to that image. Class will be image wide. image wide or maybe image width. Let's call it image width. 
This is a class that deals with image widths of image images. And we've got this one to, to think about, uh, and later on when we have multiple images, we can create multiple classes or reuse the same class because it's one, because a class can be reused more than once. An ID can only be used once per project. So now what we'll do is we'll save that and go over to your CSS file. We need to write dot image width, curly brackets. The dot, remember, is the shorthand for class. And one very simple thing that we can do, apply a width 100% save and run your index file and check out that result. If this worked, your image should grow to the size of the screen if you resize your screen to different sizes. If I'm this small, notice the picture has shrunk itself to show completely in this space. If I had more perhaps of a tablet size, it would grow to fill the tablet size. If I had this full width size, it would be the full width size. This is one possibility. I'll show you some more. But look at that. Simply adding a hundred percent width keeps the height proportional, and then it takes up as much space as we told it to. Well, what if we did 75%? And it would only take 75% of the size of the screen. There will always be a 25% gap on the edge. So I could try to play with what's the perfect number there, but we're not gonna we're not gonna try that because we're not really gonna find it. We have other ways to do this, but I'm showing you here. This is one possible um, this is one possible way that we can use this class. Now that I've defined it, I can attach this class to any image throughout my project, and it will automatically grow to fill the container that exists there doesn't quite solve our issue there. I don't quite like that this very wide image shrinks so much when I'm on a mobile device like that. I would like it a, a nice larger size. So we'll write our code a little bit differently here. As I'm saying, this will grow to the size of the container that this image is inside of. We can do this cool trick where we can also control the container itself that the image is in. Let's go back to the HTML file and we will put this image inside of a container. Technically it's in the article container, but that container is too big and it's affecting too many things. So I'm going to write a div tag around the image before the image starts, a div tag and a closing div tag. Div is the generic container. It's a division in our document. Um, divs are very useful. It's just that we've often use it, used the correct tag for the correct task. And on this one, there is no tag that deals with just what, exactly what we're trying to do. So we'll use the generic div. And therefore, this needs a class so that we can target it. Call this div image width. This is going to be a CSS rule that targets divs regarding images and their widths. That's why I chose that. This can be called anything. I can create a CSS rule called kitty cat, and it'll left me. It'll totally let me. But I need to be consistent, of course. We've got a div. Make sure you've got the opening and closing tags for div. Make sure you've named that class.
We'll go back to our CSS file. We'll leave image width alone and we'll do dot div image width. There's a property here called overflow with a value of hidden. We'll also add a width of 100%. So there's a container. Make the container fit its container. Anything that is wider than the... Anything that's bigger then the overlying con overarching container will be hidden. And so our image a moment ago was uh, was too large when we had um, that class there. And with what we're trying to do here is, if we resize the screen, whatever is bigger than the container gets hidden. Now go back and to your HTML and remove that class because the class that is forcing image width is forcing the image to grow and shrink to the size of its container. We've got a container up here that is also growing and shrinking. So these are in tandem. They're both growing and shrinking at the same time, and we get no difference. If I don't put a class, so I can even remove the whole class attribute, but if I don't put a class to the image, the image will want to be the original big size, and that original big size was too big for its div. So overlay hidden hides the image. Now this looks similar to what we had at the very beginning, but do you see that edge right there? Now it doesn't look like it got cut off, weirdly. Now there's a container there that follows the borders and the margins of the design and our image. If a person is visiting this website on a tall, thin mobile device, this is how much they see. If they're visiting it on a tablet, they see a little bit more. You know, maybe up to that. And then if they're visiting on a bigger device, they see even more. At a certain point, if you go way too far, it uh, you know, goes completely off the edge and gives a little bit of emptiness. We can, of course, write some more CSS to have like a, a minimum and maximum value. It's a little more complex than we need to do at the moment. but. CSS again comes into play to be much more mobile friendly. For the moment I'm gonna say that this code here is what I want. Depending on the person's size of the monitor it'll show more or less of a graphic. And The big secret is overflow hidden. For fun we can also do this. Um, border dash radius 25% save and run that and see what happens rounded corners. And again, at a certain point, 
stops being round, because what we're making round is the container, the div, not the actual graphic. So with some other CSS, we could confirm that that never goes past a certain limit or before a certain limit. Less percentage there gives you less percentage roundness on the corners. I like to put a little edge around it because uh, we have these clear edges around many elements, but then on our graphic it might not be so good. If you've got a color on the graphic that is similar to a background color, it'll look odd like the picture's disappearing. So if you put a little border, a little edge, that'll delineate the graphic a little better. So let's add another item here. This one's called border. Here we have three properties. Uh, we're going to add three properties to this. Uh, the first property is uh, how thick to make uh, this edge. Just to make it obvious, five pixels. So a five dot edge space. We have various um, ways to display this line, such as a solid line. We can do dashed lines, dotted lines, double lines. It's like probably like six or seven styles of lines. Let's start with solid. And then a color. Uh, let's see what it looks like. There's gray. And then semicolon. So there are three values to this property of this selector. Uh, save and run that. You should get a, a five pixel solid gray border. So five pixels, I think, is a little too thick, but I can see it. Uh, I also see a kind of like a weird space at the bottom. We'll address that in a moment. But here, then, maybe just a simple one pixel. I don't think you can put fractions here because I don't think there's one and a half pixels. Uh, I don't think it takes percent, but we can try it. Twenty-five percent. Let's see what happens there. It doesn't recognize percent there, so it doesn't show anything. So keep that on uh, pixels. One pixel solid gray. Yeah, it might be too thin. Anyway, you can figure out a good size for that. What I want to address, though, is this empty space down here. This again comes back to uh, CSS is so interconnected with it, with different elements and even if we know the specification or the framework in and out there's always going to be little things around the edges that we need to figure out for example here there is a bit of default space below a graphic that often is useful but not in this case and so there are lines you're looking at the welcome line, you're looking at the picture line, you're looking at the about line. So there's a line height, there's an amount of space between each line that its default is getting in my way. So next line we will say line dash height. Set that to zero. Cancel out any inherent line height. That should hopefully get rid of that little empty space at the bottom. Mm -hmm. 
And there we go. So that uh, line goes all the way up to the edge. So we'll pause here. Did everyone get uh, a picture to display and with a little styling? Over on the about screen, that's also a little bare, a little barren. So we've got a, a cool official uh, logo of the college that we can borrow to put in the about screen. So let's. Um, go over back to the college's website and it's a little bit hidden but if you go over to if you go to the college's website and you hover over organization you'll get style guide and logos there's a tall logo that I like right there You're going to download it, you can right click and save, or you can save the PNG version, the clean version. Don't get the EPS version, that's not web friendly, web ready. So you want to save that image. I'm saving it to my images folder, it's called CE Logo Vert. Vertical. And that's the image I want to display in the About screen. So try that on your own for a moment, then I'll do it. It's just putting an image in the About screen, see if you can put that in there. And then we'll see about any styling that may be necessary. So I downloaded my graphic in my code. I need to find where that About screen is. It's I think it's all the way at the bottom somewhere. Yeah, it's one of our last sections that we created. So way down on line 302. So there's already more than 300 lines for this project, just in HTML. Eventually, we will have also a few dozen lines of CSS and also a few hundred lines of JavaScript eventually. So we'll have about a thousand lines of code in this project, you know, a small project. So I'm going to add this image. Um, let's see, we'll add the image before that paragraph of text. So image tag there, source. I don't know yet if I need a div container. I probably will. We'll see. And I probably will need to style it somehow. But let's see what we get so far here, simply putting our image our image inside of the about section. Oh, don't forget also if you put it inside the images folder, it's images slash the name of the logo. Okay, so on different sizes that I have here, I get different results, which are they're all a little weird. Because uh, I never I didn't apply any any styling yet. It just kind of does what it wants to. So if I have my web browser down really tall and thin, like a certain size device, the graphic is getting cut off. If I then go off to other sizes like this, well now it's leaning to the left. Maybe I want it in the center. So again, CSS would come into play here. 
I'm going to see what happens if I simply attach the class of image width to the graphic. Shrink that graphic so that it fits um, inside of its container. So let's see what happens if we do image source class image img width. I have a CSS rule that is supposed to force any graphic to be 100% wide in its container. Let's see if this is enough to make that image look nice in that screen. Seems to have worked. I've got that class that it just widens an element, specifically an image. And it seems like I can use it for multiple instances. So up to this point, up to this point, we've uh, added that aside panel. We've played a little bit with some CSS. We still have more to do with that. We have more content to add, etc. Uh, in a moment, I'm going to shift gears to talk a little bit about JavaScript. I want to do some JavaScript on this project. But before we shift gears, let's pause here. Does everyone have everything up to this point? Anyone need any help before I move on to other things? Yeah, it's just 